you know, Angie Mahari here. Borderline personality and splitting. Is it your fault when the person that you're with or, you know, in whatever relationship type splits? Why do they split? What is borderline splitting? I've done several videos on this already. So you can make up your own mind if you'd rather hear from somebody who's had BPD, fully recovered from BPD, knows what it's like to split while having BPD, work with clients for 30 years about this, and, I have, and I'm the ex of two people, two partners who had quiet BPD, splitting and BPD. Why would I know anything about that, right? Hmm? Well, I know it inside out. Anyway, what a lot of loved ones want to know, a lot of partners want to know, a lot of parents of an adult child with BPD want to know, what everybody wants to know who's got anybody with borderline personality disorder in their life wants to know, is it my fault they split? Did I do something? Did I cause that? Well, the answer is no. And then it's like, was there anything I could do so that they wouldn't split so that this wouldn't happen? The answer again is unfortunately, no, there isn't anything you can do, which I really covered. I've really covered this here on this channel, but I think it, it deserves some repeating. So the thing is, people with BPD are not <laughs> little two-year-old children, okay? Like you might see a picture of a little two-year-old child crying. That's, it's not that simplistic. People with BPD have in them this core woundedness this loss, not, not loss, lack of self, arrested emotional development by the age of two. Yes, before or by the age of two. Does that mean they're forever two years old? No. What a simplistic view. A lot of people out there are struggling to try to explain something. They just really don't know anything about. But hey, you make up your own mind who you want to get your information from, by all means. So it doesn't mean that the person with BPD is this, a crying baby, a two-year-old. No, when they get triggered, they might age regress, but it's triggered to dysregulated emotion, which means too much emotion they don't know how to cope with, which means pain that is driving the emotion that they might not understand. Will they often, unless until they've had significant treatment, a lot of treatment, Will they often think that pain was caused by you or the person closest to them in a situation, any situation, for any reason whatsoever? Absolutely. Because they externalize it. Because they have to defend against it. So what is a trigger for a person with BPD? Well, I have another video out there for people with BPD on my channel here. And it's called Triggers are the Gateway to Recovery in BPD. So see, triggers are really important. But when you're with somebody who has BPD or around somebody or close to somebody with BPD, well, the triggers are from their childhood woundedness and adverse experience. It's not even necessarily about a sensitive temperament, although that played a role in early childhood development that got arrested before or by the age of two. So what's important to know about this? Every time somebody with BPD is triggered to emotional dysregulation, around you. A, it's not your fault. B, there's nothing you can do about it. And C, you can't really help them with it. And D, they don't really understand it. So this becomes one of the really huge puzzle pieces to why these relationships are often impossible. Codependents are trying to, oh, uh, last time they got triggered, they did, I did, they, I said, so I'll try not to do or say that ever again. That won't work. Now they're triggered and they're either really angry, upset, or they're giving you the silent treatment and they're withdrawing. And you're like, well, uh, what did I do? What did I do? What, what? Nothing in particular, you know, it's not that simple. So when a person is triggered, what does it with BPD? What does it really mean? It means that they are re-experiencing something in a highly dissociative way that is intensely an, an intense overload of emotion suddenly out of nowhere as far as the person with BPD experiencing it experiences it and so these triggers these reactions 
are within people with BPD. They are developed and, and the reason they're in people with BPD to be so triggered, what these triggers are, is the wounds that were laid down when in young childhood needs weren't met, attachment was insecure, or it was an unhealthy bond, because it could be totally interrupted. No attachment, interrupted attachment, but it's it's usually much more than merely insecure attachment, but it's not secure attachment, and they lose themselves to this. So it is from the adverse childhood experience and the wounding. The abandonment wound, which brings with it a shame wound, as, as it does for codependence as well, but to lesser degrees, right? Um, so the arrested emotional development by before by the age of two does not mean they're two years old every time they're triggered and emotionally dysregulated, acting in or acting out, creating chaos and drama and all that stuff, and you don't know why and you don't understand, you don't know what's going on. And so some people might call that really irrational. And then they tend to kind of point to women more and maybe they'll even say something like it's hysterical. I don't know. I've, I've had even clients refer to it that way. And it's not really that either. And so what it is, and I don't experience this when I had BPD. And, I, and back when I had BPD, I was diagnosed in 1975 and I recovered in 1990 fully. The thing about that is the trigger, there was no such word as a trigger. Nobody described it that way. But what I know would happen to me, and I didn't know what was happening to me, was that somebody would say something or something would happen. And, you know, just in the course of what was ever going on in that then and now, like here, now, then. And I would just feel a lot, a ton, all of a sudden, of emotion and pain. And I didn't know why. I didn't know where it was coming from. And yes, I would turn to the person closest to me and figure that somehow they did it. And, um, you know, that was just part, because when you have BPD and when I had it, I, you know, and then, and then you go away and you try to figure it out, but you can't really, because you associate, it's associative, right? People get triggered close to you. And, and then there might be repetitive ways they get triggered close to you that it's not your fault, but they're going to associate you with the, with, with the feelings and everything that happens after to the point that, yes, they if you try to talk to them about it, they really don't know how to explain it. And next thing you know, yes, they're going to be blaming you. But it's not like they're blaming you in a conscious, on purpose way. They just really don't know what it is. And so they externalize a lot of things because they're defending themselves. And so it gets externalized onto you. But it's not your fault. You didn't cause the trigger. And there's nothing you can do to stop it. It's like I've been asked this question and I have video up on this and many videos up on this topic in general. Um, you know, why does the splitting cycle cease? I'll put a few of them in cards up here for you if you're interested. Um, and, and why do people split into value and what does that mean? And do they ever really re-idealize? I've covered all this ground ages ago, but I don't mind recovering it again because I think I can do that in a way for people that resonate and want to watch my videos, you watch other people's videos, hopefully I'm going to give you a deeper explanation that makes more sense to you. And the other thing about this is when, so when they're triggered, this is really key. Okay. Cause a lot of people are saying this out there, writing on blogs, they're not getting it right. People at BPD can talk about it and they're not even getting it really to the point of its depth. All right. In understanding. So when a person is triggered, it's not your fault. It's not, it's, it's based on something in the here and now, but it, that's not what causes the reaction. It, 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 because the here and now, suddenly they're triggered back to something from the past. There's a level of dissociation with that. It varies for triggers, strength of triggers, each person with BPD. So the dissociation kicks in and then they are really unable to tell what's happening. So what's happening, the repetition compulsion cycles of repeated feelings and, and, and often pain and panic and, and it's not understood where it's coming from. And then they just react and defend and, or come, come right at you, you know, verbally or whatever, because you're associated with it because you're close to them when it happens, just as somebody who wounded them in childhood was very close to them when 
the sort of triggers were laid down for, for lack of a better way to put it. So with this dissociation then, it can sometimes confuse their memory of events in logical order. It's not usually a reason that they would forget what happened. And the other thing about people that when they split and they're triggered to dysregulate emotion, they're not all two-year-old children at that point in time at all. That is so incorrect, so simplistic, and anybody forwarding that really doesn't know what they're talking about. That's clear. Because it because the arrested emotional development happened at the age of two does not mean everything goes back to the age of two. I mean, some things could. But not all triggered dysregulated emotion with dissociation equals age regression. Not all, not always. So if it's a very severe trigger, then there can be that huge amount of pain all of a sudden or panic or whatever person feels with BPD. And the next thing you know, there is dissociation and they are experiencing that. And that's really scary. I know because I've been through this, fully recovered, but I've been through this and I know what that was like to experience. And then the next thing is, sometimes it's that and that's pretty bad all by itself. And, and the other thing is sometimes it will include age regression, but age regression even doesn't always mean a person is age regressing back to two years of age. That's just ridiculous. It could be, it could be even further back than that where the pain is actually coming from, but the person goes back to being in a trigger dysregulated, dissociative, if there's age regression accompanying all of that, they will be more childlike, but you can't necessarily affix a certain age on that. It's very individual, and it depends what the triggers are, and it depends where the triggers go back to in them. I hope that helps you understand a little bit more. And also, that there is nothing you can do as their mood shift, as they might not necessarily go from idealization to a devaluation split, but you might just see radical mood shifts and changes that are away from base state of emotion, but aren't necessarily all the way to triggered or dysregulated or dissociative and or when it includes age regression, which it doesn't always and doesn't go back to the age of two necessarily at all, or some crying baby. It's just not the way it is. It can be that way at times, but it is not a global statement. It is not accurate. It is just not, it's just not accurate in more cases than not. So uh, the other point I just want to make about this is that there isn't anything you can do to change. You, you didn't cause the trigger. You can't help the trigger. You can't really soothe the person with BPD because they're going to externalize it or internalize it and take space from you or ghost you, but they're going to, they're, they're going to externalize it or like I said, or internalize it. But that means that they are going to believe you're the source of it because they just don't understand the source of it and there's dissociation attached. So that doesn't make it all okay, but but I want you to understand that and understand it's not your fault and there's nothing you can do to change it. And then if you try to sue them after or too soon after, you could just retrigger, well, not you don't retrigger them, but they could be retriggered again. And so, and people with BPD can't be soothed by other people, though they're looking for it, though they need it. Again, that's something you have to go to therapy for to learn how to find the self to soothe the self. So that's another issue with all this. But in the borderline splitting cycles, you know, it's not so simplistic as they just, you know, okay, they're triggered, just regulate emotion, but then they're not necessarily a crying baby in front of you at all. There can be many different ages and stages of childhood that they get uh, triggered back to and they don't understand what's happening for them especially if they're untreated so it's really important to know it's not your fault and there's nothing you can do when it's happening you need to take care of yourself you're not responsible for it this is where people with BPD need to learn and if they don't go to treatment and get substantial and a lot of treatment they're putting the onus on you as if it's your fault as if you should do something differently no don't buy that it this is one of the big puzzle pieces splitting and and why it happens and how they get triggered and then what happens and around and around and all these episodes that they have and people always you know that are next to them it, yeah they tend to thrust it out externally because they're in abject terror 
of emotion that they don't understand and they can't regulate and, and yes, they don't know how to cope with. And so I'm not saying, I'm not excusing that and how painful it is for others. This is one of the big giant puzzle pieces though of confusion for people and of what often makes relationships with people with borderline personality impossible. Because you can't rescue them, you can't fix it, you can't change it, you don't cause the triggers, you can't soothe the reaction. Because if you try to do anything when somebody's actively triggered with BPD, they're gonna just get more triggered. And it's not because of you, but just they're already in a triggered and maybe dissociative state. And it's just gonna bring up more and more of what's happening for them. And it's going to thrust them back into what they, a re-experiencing of something from childhood that they don't know what it is necessarily because it's very subconscious unless and until a tremendous amount of treatment really going the deeper work, getting closer to full recovery than just stopping the work. And like some people at BPD magically think they only have four traits because they say so. And then they think, so therefore I don't have BPD. It's not that simple. There's deeper work to do. But so for, for loved ones or people with BPD or around, I mean, I mean, not with, but close to somebody with BPD, the triggers aren't your fault. You can't stop. That's why you're walking on eggshells because you're trying not to trigger them. You think you're triggering them. You're not triggering them. But it's like when they get triggered and all this stuff happens, then you're like, okay, well, what did I do? You're trying to figure out, did I do something? Because if I did something, I don't want to do that again. Just know people at BPA are responsible for all of that, but it takes years in therapy to figure it all out. So you can't rescue them, you can't help them, you can't change them, you can't fix them. You don't cause the triggers. You can't soothe the triggers. You can't rescue them out of it. You can't change their mood states. I hope that helps you understand better borderline splitting. Take care.